Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking on Waller Mill Park in Williamsburg, Virginia, and we're gonna play it and rate it. So take a seat, crack a cold one, and let's go toss some plastic. We've made it to beautiful hole one. We're starting off with a par three, 365 feet dead straight. Starting off with a strong tree hit. After the unfortunate tree kick, we've left ourselves about an 80 foot hyzer throw. We will take that 12 foot straddle putt for the par. Hole two, par three, 255 feet. There is a nice sidearm lane, or you can go dead straight up the middle. Oh, that was so brutal. We almost had the first one for the channel. After that ridiculous chain out, I want you guys to let me know how many aces do you have and how many chain outs do you have? Put it in the comments. Hole three, par three, 335 feet, giant Anheuser shot. <sighs> I think that's really good. 10 feet for the birdie. Early round hot take. I think this is already my favorite course in Virginia. This place is stunning. It's so quiet, it's so beautiful, and the nature around you is just going crazy. Another awesome thing about this course is there's great signage to get to the next hole. As you can tell, the next hole is, is that way. So it's, I mean, you know exactly where to go. Hole four, par three, 265 feet. You wanna throw something up the middle here, but it has to finish left. <laughs> 20 feet for the birdie. Hole five, par three, 280 feet. You have to go dead straight. As you can see, there's a pretty tight gap up there that you gotta make it through. That was our second ace run of the day. What is going on? 12 feet for the birdie. Let's go. Well guys, I think it's finally time that we introduce the man behind the camera for tossing plastic. This is Eduardo. He does a great job. He's always cheering me on. He's very supportive. Hole six, par three, 225 feet. You wanna barely clear that hill up there, otherwise you're gonna fly right past the basket. Oh, bad tree kick. We're still about 65 feet short, but this basket sits at the top of a hill. If we go for this and miss, we're probably gonna go 100 feet past. Just gonna play it safe. Ten feet for the par. Never seen the potential for a disc putt roll away worse than this. I mean, you can hit this basket and then it's all downhill 125 feet to a lake. If you've seen worse, let me know. One cool thing I want to mention about this course, their T signs actually show the elevation on a hole. That is not something you see very often and it can be very helpful. Hole seven, par three, 280 feet. I'll be honest, there's not much of a fairway, but aesthetically this hole looks very pleasing, but one bad tree kick can send your disc into a different zip code. That is way too deep. 22 foot straddle putt for the birdie. Ah, dang it. For the par. Hole eight, you just has this at 341 feet, way uphill to the right, I believe. This T sign is destroyed, so I'm kind of shooting blind. Really nice drive, leaving ourselves about 25 feet for the birdie. Let's go. 
Hole nine, 210 feet downhill, you wanna throw a really soft right to left shot. I'll be honest, that wasn't our best effort there. We still got about 40 foot hyzer pup for the birdie. Please don't roll. That could have been really bad. There was a lot of death putts on this course. All right guys, today's hole nine break is gonna be a little different. I wanna give you guys a few tips and tricks to help improve your disc golf game the next time you go to a course. This advice is gonna be focused on people just starting off or even people who've been playing for a while but have never really had any real direction. The first thing I wanna talk about is on your drives and your approach shots, keeping your arm flat and coming through straight. This is more of a subconscious action, so it's easy to search elsewhere to figure out what could be hindering your disc golf game. What helped me when I started, and something that I still do today, is I envision setting my disc on top of a bar top and just sliding it down. And this is an action that I'll repeat several times to help me get my form back into shape. Tip number two is dipping your shoulder on either your drive or your approach shot. This is the same concept as learning a baseball swing with almost identical outcomes. Instead of hitting a pop fly, you're throwing your dish straight up in the air and it just hyzers out immediately. When coming through on a drive and your shoulder dips, I want you guys to look at what happens to the disc. Your disc is gonna tilt just as much as your shoulder does and as you come through, instead of having that flat tabletop release, that dip is gonna translate in your swing and you're gonna be swinging up on a giant hyzer. You will get zero distance with this and more importantly, it's gonna cause frustration. And the third and final tip and the most important tip for today is have fun. Enjoy the game and just go toss some plastic. Hole 10, par three, 290 feet, down a very tight tunnel, not sure where the basket's tucked away at. <clears throat> really pretty looking shot there. Great distance control on the tee shot. We definitely wanted something to finish left, leaving us about a 40 foot anti pot for the birdie. <sighs> for the par. Hole 11, par three, 310 feet, very long tunnel shot. Looking good. Should be a long putt, playing some good woods golf today. Great tee shot, left ourselves about 15 feet for the birdie. Hole 12, 270 feet uphill, dead straight to a right finish. I'm not gonna lie guys, it took me about 25 minutes to find this disc. We still have about a 50 foot uphill shot for the birdie. Oh my goodness! Let us get one. Brutal roll off the basket. Still have about 23 feet for the par. Thank you, needed that recovery putt. If you guys could disc golf with anybody in the world, who would you choose? For me, it's a no brainer. I would choose Ronnie Radke. So Ronnie, if you ever see this, let's go toss some plastic. Hole 13, par three, 325 feet downhill. You have some room on the right to work with and then you wanna crash left. Oh, come back. Come back. Oh, good tree kick, we'll take that. Great tree kick, leaving us about a 45 footer for the birdie. Oof, good run. For the par. Hole 14, 200 feet. Now this is a fun one. You can go with a really high steep hyzer over the dark water and get it to crash in, or you can go with a really touchy ante shot up the left hand side. I'm gonna take my splice, throw it to the moon, and see where it lands. In the dead center of the dark water. I did remove this from the dark water, so give me a penalty stroke. Still have about a 60 foot shot to the basket. Oh, don't roll. Eight footer. Well, 15, 260 foot par three, 
uphill tunnel shot. We got some really nice ground play on that drive, leaving us about an 18 foot birdie putt. Hole 16, par three, 325 foot, giant ante shot or sidearm. Oh, we caught a branch up there. That's unfortunate. We are pin high, so that tree kick did not hurt us too bad. We got about a 60 foot left to right putt. <sighs> Oof, good run. For the par. One thing I do want to mention about this course, it is probably one of the hilliest courses I've ever played. So keep that in mind if you come here. I'm very thankful I came here on a cool morning. Otherwise I would not have brought enough water. Hole 17, par three, 325 feet. This is the first true hyzer drive of the day. I'm gonna go with Old Faithful, my Nate Sexton Firebird. We definitely got a little too fired up. We overthrew this basket by quite a bit and now we have this very daunting downhill putt that I should probably lay up. Oh, that's bad. Oh, perfect kick. Or par. And finishing off Waller Mill Park, we have a 310 foot straight tunnel shot. Oh, come back, settle. That might be way too far. We went about 45 feet past the basket on our drive. Let's see if we can make this long, tricky uphill putt to end on a good note. Oh, good run for the par. And that'll wrap up Waller Mill Park in Williamsburg, Virginia. And I'll be honest, guys, this is my favorite course that I have played so far in Virginia. The course is 100% wooded, but they have true fairways on every single one of the holes, which is awesome. A lot of woods courses, there's no real fairways. It's way too tight and it almost seems a bit unrealistic. This course has nice turf tee pads. There's long and short baskets great elevation change. I would describe this course as hiking with a purpose. I'm way out here in the woods. I have not seen one other person and it is a lot of up and down hiking. When playing this course for the first time, I would highly recommend playing from the shorts. There is a lot of swamp that you cannot see off the tee pads. And honestly, if your disc goes in there, you're probably never going to get it back. Could also see with this course, if I would have had a few bad tree kicks in the beginning, it could have really set my mindset in a different direction. Overall, I'd give Waller Mill Park a solid score of 7.5 out of 10. I think this is a very nice designed woods course and right down the street, you have New Quarter Park. So head down here, make a day of it, play two good courses, and now it's your turn to go toss some plastics.